fifty percent, which we get. I think this would be the first one of yours that have not been tethered. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cold from Fiji Island. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. that up. I can just get my knees to relax. <laughs> if you're watching this, drop a hashtag waffles uh -huh. down in the comments. <laughs> Favorite brand of hot sauce? Uh, it's tough. There's a lot of types of hot sauce. Like, if we're just going like classic, like red, kind of like vinegary, uh, Tabasco like hot sauce, I'd probably go with like a Cholula. would probably be mine. I like that. So I was raised on uh, Texas Pete, was like mm. the hot sauce in my home growing up. A lot of hot sauce in Anchorage, man. I've been eating. Uh, a lot of simple food recently. A lot of craziness going on. It's a lot of like staple stuff. So there's a lot of bread. There's a lot of eggs. A lot of that kind of stuff. So they're making uh, eggs in a basket. You know what it is? I do actually. Okay, so like you cut it. You know, you guys know what it is. So you take a slice of bread. You cut a hole in the circle of the in the middle of the bread. You put the bread like on like a skillet, and in the hole in the bread, you crack an egg. So it's a fried egg in the center of a piece of toast. And you still fry up like the round, like you don't release the other part of the bread either. But uh, like you top it, I, I put like a little salt, a little pepper, a little hot sauce. And then when I cut into it, like like the bread just kind of absorbs all the yolk. I feel like a runny yolk kind of guy, which I am. And it's really, really good. It's My mom used to make those. Salt, pepper, and hot sauce. That's it. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't know. I've been eating uh, very well here lately. My normal breakfast is sausage and honey and eggs. Mm. And then, I don't know, I've been eating <laughs> things like meatloaf. A lot of mm. stuff that I've been, besides meatloaf, a lot of stuff I've been co collecting myself, such as now pig tonight, mm. and then yeah. a lot of fish in my diet. Are you having that tonight? I am having the pig tonight. Let me know how it turns out. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to let you know. Chopped up, <laughs> choppy <laughs> chops. <laughs> There's a lot of ways to prepare it and stuff. Well, I don't know. My, I kind of just gave this off to my grandmother to do because she kind of wanted to take the reins on it, which I don't know why. She didn't seem too pleased about the concept of it. Um, so um, I really like pork, but I don't like eating pork when I go out because it's our other people's houses because it's consistently dry. It's I agree with that. So, so overcooked. I will agree with that. I like thick pork chops on the grill. Yeah, I think grilling is a really good way. Of course, barbecue is always a great way to yeah. do a lot of things. But uh, my, my breakfast, I've either been doing the eggs in the basket or just been doing like fresh fruit, and like a bagel. Okay, that would come to go and be good. And I need a lot of ramen broth from scratch. So I've been having a lot of ramen, like two quarts of chicken stock, like chicken ramen, so two quarts of chicken stock. Soy sauce, fish sauce, oyster, oyster sauce, a little bit of chili flake, salt, pepper, uh, ginger, garlic. What else is in there? Uh, rice wine, rice wine vinegar. Cook that for a couple of hours. Sliced onion, chicken thighs, and mushrooms. <laughs> this is all going in your office. It's not. Yeah. It's a uh, pan of noodles. Like a lot of a lot of broth. So I've been eating it for like. 
when I say it, like eating it. Oh wait, this is your homemade ramen yeah. you're talking about. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not throwing that into like this uh, a free, uh, 60 second ramen thing. <laughs> That'd be kind of overkill. Oh, I do have some just basic cup noodle stuff for like lunchtime. Now I know you said you watch some cooking shows uh, on YouTube. With, uh, I forget the name of the channel. But it's like something Townsend and Sons. They do like yes, the 17th I've, century. I've seen some of that. That I love that stuff. That kind of annoyed me. I watched some of their videos, really good. And then, like, you know how YouTube has recommended? Mm -hmm. For like weeks, they just constantly pop up recommended. I'm like, okay, I, I got gotcha. you. I, I saw it. I know it. But yeah, they make some interesting stuff, like 17th century, uh, like just colonial American stuff. Some of it's like really cool concepts. I actually took one of the concepts, which is a grilled whole onion, mm. yellow onion. Yeah. And I take it. So I take like a <laughs> quick little cut into it. Yeah. Put a little bit of oil, sometimes a little hot sauce, salt, pepper, mm. cover it up, a little butter, throw it on the grill, just let it, sit, just let it cook. Yeah. It gets so soft and like the the change in the flavor from like that yellow onion kind of like oh, yeah. bitterness, it's, it's like gone. Cooked onions. Totally yeah. yeah, it's like gone. I bought a, like a bag of like medium sized Spanish onions and then make uh, basically like kind of um, like Outback Steakhouse with blue onions from them. Mm -hmm. It's a super simple kind of process. And the onions are small enough that each person can have their own little onion. Has anyone been trying to draw? Is that the right code? It says, uh, name of the room's uh, trainway. And, uh, let me check it out real quick. Nine, four, four. Uh, switch right. around. Just popped over. I've been Better sitting in the reverse. I've been sitting in the middle screen. Dispense. Close. Uh, more. Close. Welcome to Salt Me Up with Captain Firebear. <laughs> Alright, I can tell you if this is on. Alright, only one second. I guess it's just been so crazy because everyone's been waiting on us as soon as we get their 15 minutes still. Oops. <laughs> but yeah, that's going to have a long little blue and onion kind of situation. That and then we brought some, some chicken legs, so I'll probably grill those. I'm definitely growing this weekend. Barbecue sauce. Big rack of ribs I'm doing. Yeah. For a while, that protein was hard to find, or it was like really expensive. I'm not sure how the prices in the store are now, though. <sighs> They're still pretty bad. Um, I don't know. I haven't been in the store in a while, but the price for protein skyrocketed so much yeah. where I was. Like, I think it was like $8 a pound for hamburger meat. Whew. Yep. Yeah, that's how it's been for a while. So, some nights lately, I haven't actually been eating meat because it's it's been, it has been so expensive. I've been I've been kind of eating meat still. I guess it's like in the stocks and stuff I've been doing, but I think it's like uh, I want to say Food Depot. You know they're, but they they've had pretty good prices on a lot of the meats, and they never ran out of it. Nice. So we usually I think the only thing we usually get there though is like uh, maybe. I want to say the chicken, chicken and pork chops, maybe. Gotcha. But yeah, I know a lot of moms probably buying a lot of chicken. So the chicken's been out. And then as far as beef goes, obviously like really expensive cuts, which you probably still find because people aren't buying those right now. But the rest of the ground beef goes. Oh, yeah. It's pretty inexpensive. You can use a lot of different things, meat, loaf, pasta, hamburger. So you know, something like that you can freeze for a long time and use it for a lot of different things. It's going to get bought out really quick that and all the chicken fingers and boneless skinless and all that kind of stuff is gone <laughs> for ribs, chicken nuggets. ribs and more things like that that they actually have to like, put some time into probably. chicken nuggets okay. <clears throat> absolutely love ribs and love. I'm, I'm gonna slow cook them this weekend chilies very bad Hi, welcome to Chili's. I actually, I don't know enough about like 
slow cooking and smoking. And really? stuff like that. This is all stuff that I just never learned. My grandfather was the one that did all of that. And unfortunately, it was never passed on. Mm-hmm. So I need to learn how to do that. Stuff. There's a lot of good sources for that. I only grew up in a lot of outside grills. What is up, Zach? Is that? It's not on audio yet. But yeah, we grew up with a lot of electric grills. It's a lot different. They're not down a part of the same type of flavor. It's definitely an outside affair. What's up? Still joining the audio, but they're moving the camera around. What's the time over there, Coach? Five hours, right? Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. What's up, Zach? How's it going, man? Mm-hmm. Still now. Good deal. Good deal. Hey, Zach, for class today, uh, we're not going to need any kind of pad or pillow, but we are going to need like a, 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 something to lean on. We're going to need like a chair or something. So uh, I actually got your couch behind you. That'll work great. I'm just going to use a metal chair. Just something you can kind of hold on to for like balance because we're going to be standing up. All right. So if you can just kind of lean on your couch, that'll work fine. But we'll need that today. All right. Thumbs up. All right. Let's, let's actually we can unmute Zach. He's on one here real quick. Can I talk to him? See how his day's going. Mm, yeah. Zach, you gotta hit the prompt. Up oh, there, you know, goes. there he goes. What's up, dude? How's it going? Good. Good. How, how, do you anything special today? Anything crazy? No, not really. Not really. The same old, same old. Uh, yeah. yeah. Have you been doing uh, schoolwork at home, or is it spring break for you this week? Um, late spring break. Break. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Have you been uh, helping around the house at all? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. A little bit. Okay. Just wondering. Just wondering. I know a lot of my students have been getting bored lately, staying at home a lot. How are you? How are you handling it? You, you good? You getting bored? So you doing good at home? Are you getting bored at all? Are you they're staying calm. I'm fine. It's not really that boring. Not really that boring? Good answer. Good answer. All right. Got William here as well. Awesome. We have about three minutes before class. Okay. Good deal. Good deal. Actually, yeah, no, that's a little fine. We'll, we'll be leaning on the chair and we'll also be kind of be using it for some other stuff. But the couch will work fine too. Anything like weight, waist height will be good. William has a bed right there and that'll work good. Mm-hmm. I think that will be fine. We got two minutes before class starts. Damn it! That's this many, just in case you Or this many. Or that many, yeah. Or you know what? You're gonna magic trick, watch this. Boom, see? Oh, snap. Now. Magic. Let's look at this on camera. Oh, I got to change it. There, that looks okay. Now it looks on camera kind of, right? Kind of looks like it, a little bit. All right. That's a good magic trick. <laughs> of course, of course. Two minutes till class starts. You want to check in with William? Yeah, we can mute me. William's right in front. See how he's doing. What's up, William? How's it going, man? I'm fine. You're fine? Having a good day so far? Mm-hmm. Cool beans. Uh, did you do anything different today or just kind of a normal day? Well, I went to the park and I saw a duck bite another duck and it wasn't very nice. <laughs> I haven't known too many ducks that are very nice. Uh, you're showing to the park, all the parks here are closed. Do you live in uh, on the other side? Are the Alabama parks closed? Alabama parks closed. Alabama parks closed. At least Phoenix City parks are closed. Oh, okay, okay. I guess you got lucky going to the park or you got to some secret park because I've been trying to go to the park and everybody's been telling me the park's closed. Uh, Idlehour Park is still open. Yes. Oh, okay. Interesting. I have a lot of birds there. That's what, like, it was these three ducks and this one that kind of looked like a chicken ran over, bit one, and then it jumped on top of another one. Crazy. Yeah. All the ducks I know, all the ducks I've seen in my lifetime have been mean, mean, mean animals. So I, I live yeah. by the, the 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 saying, never trust the duck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go and check in on Tom and see how Tom's doing to get today. What's up, Tom? How's it going, man? Have a good day so far? 
Pretty good. Did you do anything interesting today? Anything fun? No. Not really? Just another day? Mm-hmm. Well, it's pretty nice outside. I see you training kind of in the garage. You got the door open. It's a pretty nice day out. Maybe it's not too late to do something fun. <laughs> well, it's 6.30, so we're going to start class, everybody, so we can all pop up. Yes, yes sir. This is already started. Up in here, up in here. All right. What's up, Keelan? I see you joining as well. We're going to start with a nice, quick little warm-up. We're going to be a little more of a nice, kind of simple warm-up today. Nothing too crazy. We're going to do a lot of different kicking today, so we're going to make sure our lower body is nice and warmed up and all that kind of stuff. Let's start. We're going to start with some foot fires today, so we're going to be chopping our feet super fast. When I say up, we're going to jump up and clap our hands. When I say down, we're not going to do a full sprawl. We're just going to look down and slap the ground just like that super duper simple so you know foot fires ready set go so we're chopping our feet fast 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 there we go moving those feet down down up up down up 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 down keep moving keep moving down down Okay, we're breathing, breathing. Up. Nice, and relax. Very good. Now we're gonna go 10 jumping jacks. 10 jumping jacks, ready, set, begin. One, One sir, two, sir, three, sir, four, sir, five, sir, six, sir, seven, sir, eight, sir, nine, sir, 10, sir. Awesome, hold on our pulse. Feet wide, 10 body squats. Ready? One. One, sir. Two. Two, sir. Nice go. Three. Three, sir. Four. Four, sir. Good job, Tom. All the way down, everybody. You got six. Six, Three. sir. I'm oh, sorry. I see one. Let's go back. Five. Five, sir. Now we're up to six. Six, sir. Seven. Seven, Seven sir. Eight. Eight, Eight, sir. Nine. Nine, sir. Nine and a half. Nine, Nine and a half, half, sir. Nine three quarters. Nine three quarters, sir. Nine and four fifths. Nine, Nine and four fifths. Nine, five, six. Nine, Nine and five, six, sir. And ten. Ten, sir. Very good. Give yourself two. Clap, clap. Awesome, awesome. Okay, next thing we're gonna do, like I said, it's like kicking today. I wanna make sure our legs are nice, loose, and you see we're gonna do some jumping lunges. Watch me really quick. So normal lunge, I take a step forward, I bend my front knee, and I don't want my back knee to go down. See how there's no space here? That's bad. I don't want to hit my knee on the ground. I want my knee to be up just a little bit. But instead of a normal lunge, we're going to switch and do a jump in between. So we're going to do our normal lunge. Then we're going to hop to the other side, okay? And we're going to do that 10 times, 10 times. So make sure this one takes a little bit of space. Make sure you don't bump in and kick anything behind you or in front of you, okay? Ready? And one. One, sir. Two. Two, sir. Three. Three, sir. Four. Four, sir. Five. Five, sir. Six. Six, sir. Seven. Seven, sir. Eight. Eight, sir. Nine. Nine, sir. Ten. Ten, sir. Pop up. Yes, yes sir. And attention. Yes, sir. Now we're doing some stretching really quick in our lower body, loosey goosey. So reach down, try and touch your toes. No bend in the knee. Just reaching, reaching, reaching. There we go. Good, Tom. Keep our knees straight. Good, William. Deep breaths. Relax. We're going to stand back up. We're going to go to a wide stance, feet nice and wide. Not super wide, whatever's comfortable for you. And we're going to reach down to one foot. Both hands, keeping our legs straight, reaching down to one foot over here. Nice job. Just keep that breathing in check. Good job, Zach. Nice work, William. Just be honest, lock those knees out. No bend in the knee. We're gonna switch, change sides now. Yes, sir. Same thing. Down to the middle. Yes, yes sir. sir. Knee straight, knee straight. Okay, now here's what we're going to do. We're going to narrow our stance just a little bit. 
So we're not going fully narrow. We're just bringing our feet back together just a tap. We're going to keep one leg straight. We're going to bend the other knee. We're going to what I call our Spider-Man position. So I bend one knee down, keep the other leg straight, kind of get down on the ground low like Spider-Man. A lot of times you see Spider-Man like on comic books. He's kind of in this position shooting webs and stuff. Okay. Good work. So if you see, I have one leg all the way straight. My other leg is bent underneath me. What should we be feeling in the stretch? We should be feeling a stretch on the inside of our straight leg. So kind of underneath this leg here, going down my leg, that's where the stretch is. Not on the top side, not up here, but underneath going down. I should feel the stretch kind of in here. All right, change sides. Yes, sir. On the other way, same thing. If you're not feeling the stretch, you can kind of move your foot out further and further. Instead of being like on the bottom of your foot, you can kind of be on the side of your foot here. And that will really start to push this hip open. Gonna help us with those taller kicks and that kind of stuff. Nice, Tom, very good. Excellent. Awesome job. Pop back up. Yes, sir. We're gonna narrow our feet. Kind of like we're saying, like a black ball, feet short, short apart. Now with our kicking, a big part is our hips as well and kind of turning those hips. So we're just gonna kind of rotate a little bit back and forth, nice and light. Just getting our hips used for that rotation. Good. It doesn't have to be a super strong thing. We're not trying to pop our back or anything like that. We're just trying to loosen our hips up, okay? Now, once you're comfortable with that, well, once you start to do, if you notice my feet aren't moving right now, I want to start pivoting on your toes if you're throwing a punch. So as you pivot on your toes, it's gonna to let you turn further and further. And that's really gonna help us get deep into our kicks. All right, and time. Attention. Yes, sir. We are ready for our first and only water break today. When you get your water break, something else you might need. Uh, today I'm gonna to be using this. We're not gonna need any pads or pillows today. I'm gonna be using this chair. If you have a chair like this, like a normal folding chair, it works great. If you don't have a chair, here's what you need. You need something you can lean on, something like this, putting some weight on it, okay? And then also something that's not too tall. You see this is like kind of close to my belt level because we're also gonna be trying to kick over it today. So find something sturdy that you can lean on and kick over. So I see Zach, you have your couch. William, you have your bed. Uh, Tom, you got a whole gym worth of stuff to find. You can do <laughs> anything there. And then you can even use your couch as well. We're not gonna be kicking this thing, so it doesn't have to be soft. But if it is, that stool will work great, okay? Just grab a water, uh, water real quick and find something we don't have already. Water break. One, two, three. Water, water, water. Go, go, go. If you don't need any water, you just stay here and chill out. Great work. <laughs> okay. So William, you're good, bud. Um, I see that on your bed, you have like your bed, and then the corner of your bed has a little post. I want you to watch out for that post. You can put your hand on there to lean, but it looks like if you kick it, it'll probably hurt. So be careful when we do that part, okay? You don't want to kick that edge of your bed. Pro tip, okay, I, I've stubbed <laughs> my toe and kicked my bed on accident a hundred times, so. All right, Tom's back, Zach's getting back. And awesome, and Caitlin has the same type of chair I do. Perfect, 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 okay. So today's word is versatility. Does anyone know what the word versatility means? Can anyone raise their hand? I see William with his hand up first. Let's go on over to him and see if he can tell me about versatility. What does versatility mean, sir? Versatility means like different things or like something having different uses. or like different, being different. Like versatile yeah, exactly. means different things. Exactly. And why do you think that would be important for like a martial artist to be like versatile and to have good versatility? Uh, well, you just have to be good at a lot of things. Because if you're only good at one thing, if you have to do use the other thing, you're going to fall flat in your face. Totally. Totally. You're absolutely right. Really. That's an awesome answer. As martial arts are going to be versatile. We're going to be able to use a lot of different moves, a lot of different styles of motion so that no matter what's coming at us, what's in our way, we'll be able to handle it. Now, like you said, there's some people who are really good at one thing. Like, I am not a very good kicker, okay? I am really good at the grappling, the takedowns, the on-the-ground stuff. That's what I like. That's what I'm good at. One of the worst things in martial arts is what I'm teaching you today, the kicks, okay? But it's very important. Even I know I don't like the kicks, I know I have to be good at them because there's going to be some situations where you have to know how to kick. It's like being um, a construction worker, okay? I can't use a hammer 
for every single thing I'll need to do. I'm going to need some other tools in my toolbox to kind of get some of the tasks done. Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. So here's the first drill we're going to use our pillow, or not pillow, excuse me, our chair or our whatever for. Okay. This is going to be a flexibility drill. One of the reasons a lot of new students have a problem with kicks is they lack the control and flexibility to do the kick. And if the kick's tough for them, then they're not going to use it. Okay? It's going to be that tool that they push all the way to the back, and they're not going to use it because they don't want to look goofy. They know it might mess them up and trip them, and they might you know, fall flat on their face. So they don't want to use the kick. We need to be comfortable throwing kicks. So here's what I'm going to do. If you have a chair or a stool, I want you to just put whatever you got right in front of you. If you're using your bed or your, or your couch, that works too. Just make sure that when we go, we're going to be facing this surface, okay? Here's what we're going to do. Everybody just watching me first. I'll tell you when to go. We're going to be in a good ready stance. Yeah. And we're going to be working our round kick or a roundhouse kick with our rear leg. So I'm going to take my back leg. And all I'm looking to do is to throw my roundhouse kick over this without touching it, okay? So good control and flexibility. I want to have control throughout. So if I'm just gonna swing my leg up super crazy getting over it and it look like that, that did not look like a good roundhouse kick, right? This is just me throwing my leg up and getting it over the top. So I wanna be in a good roundhouse kick. I wanna make sure that when I do my kick, my front foot, my front foot, my toes point out. So I really get my hips nice and open. And I'm gonna turn and throw my kick as it goes over. After I kick over it, I'm just gonna reset and kick again. So I kick over my chair, over my object, and reset, okay? Yeah. Other than just being crazy, the number one mistake people forget is they forget that this leg, this kick, is the, with the shin. So when people throw their kick, sometimes they'll do this, and they bring their foot straight up and over with my toes pointed up. If my toes are pointed up, I'm not gonna hit with my shin, I'm gonna hit with the inside of my leg. If you poke the inside of your leg, it's very mushy, it's very gooey. There's nothing but muscles there. It's gonna hurt if you hit with that. So make sure your toes should be pointed sideways also. When I go, my foot's not straight up and down. My toes are gonna be sideways. Boom, point it over the chair, okay? Before we start this, does anyone have any questions? We're not looking for power. I'm looking for speed. I'm looking for you guys to have good control, not be wibble wobbly all around, and just to kick over and then reset, okay? So let's do this 10 times. And race dance. Yeah! Ready, set, one. Eesh. Good, good control, take your time. And two. Eesh. Nice, really good. And three. Eesh. Nice, Tom, good job. Keep pointing those toes out a little bit further. Make sure our toes are turned sideways when we kick. And four. Eesh. Nice, good job, Zach. That chair looks a little tall. So yeah, don't try to kick over the back of the chair. Just focus on the front of the chair right there if the chair's too tall for you. Okay, and four. Eesh. Five. Eesh. Six. Eesh. Seven. Eesh. Eight. Eesh. Nine. Eesh. Nice, Galen. Not too bad. Make sure our leg comes out. Don't stop short. So if I kick over, I try and bring my leg back like this. That's going to be awkward. So if you want to, you can kick all the way through and kind of spin with it. So you kick all the way through. Boom. And just carry through and do a little spin move. Okay. Ready? Nine. Eesh. And ten. Eesh. Okay, good job, good job. Now we're gonna pump that up. That's kind of level one. We're gonna level two now. Level two, we're gonna do the motion, but we're also gonna do the counter motion, okay? Here's what I mean. I'm gonna take my kick over the chair, boom. But after I'm done, I'm not gonna spin around or reset. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the kick backwards. So I'm gonna take the kick back over the chair, kind of like I press rewind on a movie. So now I kick it back over just the way I threw it. So I kick over the top and I do it back over the top as well. Okay, almost like a reverse kick. All right, does anybody need to see that again? This is really gonna test your balance. 
Okay, I'll show it one more time just in case. I'll try and go slow. So I do my kick, I open my toes up, I throw my kick. As soon as my toe touches, I'm not taking any extra steps. My feet are still planted. It's kind of an awkward position. That's okay. Only for a second. I pick my foot back up and I throw it back over the top, back where it went. I end how I started. We'll do this 10 times, right? Brace hands. Kia! Yeah. And one. Peace. There. And back. Good, Tom. Awesome, bud. And two. Peace. Three. Peace. Good. Four. Peace. Nice sack. Good job. Five. Peace. Keeping those hands up, too. Don't neglect the hands. Good stances. Six. Peace. Seven. Peace. Eight. Peace. Nine. Ish. And ten. Ish. Ish. Good job. Everyone relax. I'll see you really quick. Yes, sir. Okay, here's the next thing we're going to do. Now we're going to work on building that hip strength, that core strength. A lot of times you might feel like there's a weird, like, pinching sensation in your hips. Your hips feel funny or like you're not flexible enough. That's when our hips need some more work. And that's just because when we're walking around doing normal people stuff, we don't have to use our hips like this. This, isn't a, this is a weird motion for our body to do because we've never done this kind of thing before, except for in martial arts. So just like walking for the first time, we're gonna have to develop those good kicking muscles in our hips to really throw a lot of that stuff. And we're gonna work on that now. So here's what we're gonna do. This time, when I go, I'm gonna have that thing that I was using, but instead of kicking over it, I'm gonna use it as a bit of a brace, either one or two hands, okay? So if you're leaning on your bed, you can lean on your bed, couch, whatever. Just make sure that you're not like tilting it back to where when you lean on it, it's gonna slide away from you and you're gonna face plant. I've made that mistake before too. So we're leaning here. All I'm gonna do is pick my kicking leg up here. Okay, my knee is up, my toes are pointed, all right? What I'm gonna do is keep my top of the leg up to the knee. This is all gonna be frozen, but below the knee, that part is gonna do the kick. So I bring my knee up and I do a kick, one and I bring my knee back, and I'm not gonna put my foot on the ground. We're gonna try and get 10 kicks without putting our foot on the ground. Use the chair to help you balance. So I should look like this. Bring my knee up, go one, two, three. Super easy with good control. You're gonna feel your hips start to get tight. That's normal. We're gonna get to 10, okay? So everybody pop up. Yes, yes sir. sir. Everybody pop up. Yes, sir. All right, so if I'm kicking with my right leg, I want that thing I'm balancing on on the other side, okay? So if I'm kicking with my right, I wanna balance on the left. Very good. This isn't quite a ready stance because we're leaning, but just think that, yeah, you wanna kinda of have a good ready stance, so here. Ready, we're gonna do it together. Get set, knees up, and one. One, sir. Two. Two, sir. Three. Three, sir. Four. Four, sir. Five. Five, sir. Knees up in between, the knee stays up the whole time. Six. Six, Six sir. Seven. Seven, sir. Eight. Eight, sir. Nine. Nine, sir. Ten. Ten, sir. Relax. How many of you guys feel that in your hips a little bit? You guys feel it like in here, kind of funky monkey? Oh, okay, you should. Sense. Now I want you to change sides. If you are using your bed, you might be facing away from the camera. That's okay. But I want you to brace with the other hand. We're going to do the thing with the other leg now. Ten. Same exact thing, just the other side. All right. Everyone get ready. Knees up. And one. One, sir. Two. Two, sir. Three. Three, sir. Four. Four, sir. Five. Five, sir. Six. Six, sir. Seven. Seven, sir. Eight. Eight, sir. Nine. Nine, sir. And ten. Ten, sir. Great job. Everyone relax? Yes, sir. Now that our hips are funky like a monkey, we can do a little bit of a dance. Everybody do a little dance. Do a little dance. Do a little dance. Just don't, you don't have to dance. You don't have to dance. I'm a terrible dancer. Uh, you can relax now. Now we're going to go over a brand new kick. This is a kick you probably have not done in class before. So we're going to learn a brand new kick today. Everyone have a seat for me, please? Yes, sir. The kick we're going to work on today is our spinning back kick. Our spinning back kick, okay? And we're going to get rid of our chair. Don't worry about that. It's our first time doing it. So we're just going to practice it in our open space 
just in the air so we don't break anything. That's spinning in the name, so you definitely want to make sure you have enough space. Don't break anything, okay? So here's what a spinning back kick looks like. Are we got a good ready stance? Yeah. I take a step with my front leg off the center line. I look back and I throw my spinning back kick, okay? Three steps for this. Three important things to know. First, of course, we're in our ready stance. That doesn't count. You know that already. <laughs> Here, number one. My front foot is going to step across. So my left leg is going to step to the right. And my toes are going to face that way. So my left leg steps to the right, and I point my toes to the right. But step two, before I kick, I want to look behind me and to make sure I can see where I'm kicking. So I want to make sure, in this case, I can see the camera because that's where I'm kicking. I would never throw this kick blind. I would never just throw the kick before I could see, okay? Because if you do that, you're gonna have poor control and you're not gonna see your target, so you might miss, and it's gonna be a big old sloppy mess. So we always look and then kick. Everybody say it, look, look, and then kick. Then kick. All right, so step one, I step across, toes point to the other side. Step two, I'm gonna look where I'm kicking. I'm looking behind me, over my shoulder. I can see the camera and coaching Andrew there. Now I'm gonna take my other leg, the one I did not step with, and that leg's gonna kick out. This kick is like a side kick, so my foot's gonna be sideways, okay? So I kick back, boom. My foot is sideways. As it comes out like a push kick, you're gonna see my foot is sideways, not vertical, up and down, but going this way. So now full speed, it looks like this. Boom. And then I'm back to my stance, all right? It's a very fun kick to do. Practice it a lot. Boom, there, okay? You practice it, it'll be just as fast as your normal kicks, even though we're doing a crazy spin move. Before we practice it, does anyone out there have any questions about the move? Okay, does anybody need to see it again? All right, everybody pop up. Yes, sir. Let's go, let's go, Zach, let's go. Kaylin, Tom, all right. So don't worry about your stool, your chair. Get that on out of the way. We're gonna practice this on our own, 10 times, 10 times. And ready stands. Kia. And one. One, sir. Eesh. And two. Eesh. And three. Eesh. And four. Eesh. And five. Eesh. And six. Eesh. <laughs> okay, let's slow it down really quick. Let's go step by step because I can see some of you guys are a little frustrated. No reason to be frustrated. This is a brand new move. We're going to step by step. Ready stance. Kia! Okay. I want you to take your front leg. You're going to take a step across. So that means if your left leg's in front, you're going to step to the right. If your right leg's in front, you're going to take a step to the left. Whichever way you're stepping, your toes are going to point that way. So look, I step this way, and my toes are also going to point that way. So I'm not going to point out the rear direction. I step across. And my toes point that way. Good. Now, right now I'm looking at the camera, okay? I'm gonna look that same direction. So my toes are pointed to the right. I'm gonna look toward the right, all the way around, all the way around until I'm facing my target again. I wanna be able to see them, okay? Now, whichever foot did not kick, the far away one, which is gonna be this one over here, is gonna be the one that kicks and comes out, okay? So, we're gonna go step by step. Are you set? Here we go. Step one. Step one, we're gonna step across, point the toes. Step two, turn around and look. Step three, throw your kick. And now it should be facing the front. A lot better, okay, I saw everyone do a lot better. Let's go again. Step by step, good stance. Step one, take our step, step across. Step two, turn, look back. Step three, throw the kick. Good job, good job. One more for good measure. One more for good measure, good stance. Step one, step across, point your toes. Step two, turn around, look behind you. Step three, throw your kick. Good, okay. Now that we've done it, I want everyone to relax, have a seat real quick, take a couple of deep breaths. You've had a chance for your body to feel it. Do we have any questions now? Anyone having a problem with this, a tough part of this move? Uh, Tom does. So let's go over to Tom and see what Tom's question is, because this is a kind of a tough move, guys. So that's not as easy as some of the kicks we normally do. 
It's actually very hard. It's actually very hard to kick and which way you're going. Yes. So the direction's the big part with this. You can't really think about left, right. Because the left handed, some people are right handed. Um, you never really know what's left, what's right. Try to think the same side, opposite side. So what things are going to the same side, what things are going to the opposite side. This move, I base everything off of which way the toes are pointing. Okay, Tom? So I don't think right or left. I think when I think of my directions, I think about same side, opposite side. So my foot steps to the opposite side, and my toes point to the same side. Now, what's gonna change from there? Whichever way my toes are pointing, now it's the same side. So same side for me, in this case, is right side. But if you stand the other way, it would be everything opposite, right? So my footsteps the opposite side, toes point that way. Whichever way my toes are pointing, that's the way I'm spinning. And my other leg, my opposite side leg is the one that's spinning. So you gotta kind of think about it different. I saw your hand raised for a second. Let's go back to Tom really quick and see what he had to, uh, to add on. See back and like where you're kicking for me. Uh, you're having a hard time seeing back where you're kicking. Is that what you said? Yes. Okay, great. Well, I can fix that problem. That's an easy problem to fix. And how are we going to fix looking where we kick? Where the fix for that is in the previous step, in step one. So let's get a little bit. One second. Let me grab some. Okay. So hopefully this will help. Okay. This is an imaginary line, okay? So let's just say this is wherever I'm facing. So. That imaginary line is where I'm facing to the front, okay? Now let's say the person I'm fighting, the bad guy, is this purple pad here, okay? So I wanna be able to see that purple pad. I wanna see that bad guy before I kick, right? That's the rule, I have to see him before I kick. So if I'm in my stance, how am I gonna see that bad guy when I spin? I'm gonna see him by stepping correctly, okay? So Coach Andrew, pick it back down to the floor. This foot, I'm gonna step in, watch. When I step, I cross the line. My foot was over here on this side of the line. When I step, I'm over here now. That way, when I do spin and look back, I can look back and see super, super easy. But if I step and I don't cross the line, so let's say my foot's on this side of the line and I step and turn and it's still on this side of the line. Now when I try to turn around and look back, I can't do it. I'm not flexible enough. So the main way that you're going to be able to see the bad guy, Tom, and see where you want to kick is you've got to step more across, okay? And I'm not going to step over here and trill out all day. I'm here for a split second before I throw my kick at the bad guy, okay? And that's a big problem with a lot of kids. A lot of students, they have a hard time seeing. You've got to step across that line. If you don't step far enough, you're, you're going to have to make an owl. You're going to have to turn your head all the way around to see your target, okay? It's a very, very good question. Any other questions out there? Okay, no other questions? All right, well, in that case, it's time for our stripe test today. Who remembers our word for the day? Who remembers our word for the day, anybody? Not William, William already answered a question about it. Zach, do you remember our word for the day, sir? Let's unmute Zach real quick and see if he remembers. Start with the letter V. One second. Zach, do you remember the word for today? Sir? You remember the word for today? What's today's word? I don't remember it, sir. Okay, that's okay. Thank you for being honest. Okay. All right, William, save the day. We're coming back over to you as a double entendre because your last name's Day. See what I did there? Okay. William, what is today's word? Versatility. Versatility. Okay, you have to be good at a lot of different things. All right. So here's how today's stripe test is going to work. I know we're on a little bit of a delay with the video, but we're going to be doing uh, combinations on call, which means I'm going to say a combination of moves, and you have to do that combination of moves, okay? If you do the combination incorrectly, or if you don't know one of the moves, then you fail the test. But before we start putting all those combos together, I'm going to show you all of the different moves that I might select for the combos, okay? So here are the different moves I might include, and these are the moves we need to know. And you should know these if you're a white belt, yellow belt, or orange belt. These are all basic moves. So moves I might use in these combos. I might ask for a jab. I might ask for a cross. I might ask for a hook. 
I might ask for a high block, a muscle block, or a low block. And as far as kicks go, I might ask for a push kick, a round kick, or a side kick. Okay? I'm not asking for any different moves. I'm going to ask for one of those nine moves in a combination. You just have to do them in the correct order. Okay? And these nine moves should be moves that we've already done in class plenty of times. All right? So does everyone pop up? Yes, sir. And raise hands. Yeah. Okay. We're going to do three, three move combinations today. You have to do all three move combinations correctly to pass your stripe test. So make sure you're listening. I'll say all three moves and I'll say go. After I say go, that's when you do the combo, of course. Okay. First combo. We're going to go high block, low block, push kick. Ready? Go. Good. Okay. Next combo. We're going to go cross, hook, round kick. Ready? Go. Okay, one of us forgot one of the moves, okay? I'll give you guys another chance to do it. It's cross, hook, round kick. Okay, ready, go. Okay, better, better, better. All right, last move, or last combo, excuse me. We're gonna go middle block, push kick, Side kick. Go. Okay, really quick. Let's talk about the sides we do things on, okay? So, watching me. Remember, sides are important here. Left hand is our jab hand. So, left hand is our jab. Right hand is our cross, left hand is our hook. As far as blocks go, we can do blocks on either side. The correct answer is we should be blocking on the side they're throwing the move on, right? So I could go high block with my left hand, or I could go high block with my right hand. Same thing for my muscle blocks or middle blocks and my low blocks. As far as my kicks go, okay, my push kick, this is my back leg. My round kick is with my back leg. And my side kick is with my front leg. So I step and then side kick. Okay? So we gotta know which side moves to run. It's kind of like I explained to my leadership students in the, in the next level class. I talk about lock and key system, okay? When you have a lock, you can't just reach for a pair of keys and put whatever key you want to unlock it. There's a specific key for that specific lock. And it will only move, only open if we use the correct key. Same thing with martial arts. If we throw a move on the wrong side, it's not going to work the same way. Yes, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. So, you guys are very good today. We're going to keep working on that. We'll everybody have a seat relax real quick. Yes, sir. This last portion of class, we do something a little bit different. I know we haven't been able to go live lately or play a lot of different games we play in class, but I do want to engage with you guys and have a fun thing at the end of every class. So for this class, I thought it'd be fun to learn a little bit more about you guys and see what you guys like to do in your spare time. So you guys have one minute to, to think about something that you would like to show or talk about. It could be your pet. It could be maybe if you like art, some kind of painting you made. If you like video games, some kind of video game, a toy, whatever you like to do in your spare time, whatever you like to do other than martial arts, I want you to grab something if you want to grab something, and we're going to talk about it one by one. So maybe you guys, 30 seconds. Ready, set, go. Go grab whatever you'd like. Quick, I, I quick, know 30 more seconds. You, so. 30 seconds, 30 seconds. If you like to make animal balloons, you know, bring out some balloons and make, my, make a, a dog <laughs> or something like that. Okay. I had some students in last class showing me their pets, their rock collections, all kinds of stuff. Quick, quick, quick. Uh-oh. 
this. No, we had a, what, we had, we had, we had a chest yeah. set, we had like a life size like dinosaur. Life size so dinosaur. Life size Batman mech machine. Oh yeah, ba life, Batman mech machine. Okay, we'll go one by one. So we'll start with Zach. Uh, Zach's the first one I see in, in my list of people. So Zach, we'll go over to you, bud, and we'll see what you got uh, to show today. What do you have there, Zach? Uh, football. Football, and you, if I remember correctly, you played football for quite a long time, right? Yes, sir. What position do you play? Um, offense. Offense, okay, awesome. And how long have you been playing? Um, for about a year, just. Okay, just... Well, that's a pretty decent amount of time. Uh, and you played soccer also as your other sport, right? Yes, sir. Good deal. Do you have a favorite football team? Um, Georgia. Georgia? Georgia. Okay. All right. Good deal. Good deal. Zach, thanks for showing that, bud. Good luck. Uh, hopefully, uh, football resumes not too long from now, and you'll be back on the field playing. Let's check over with William. William, what do you have? I saw you carrying a whole bunch of stuff over there, sir. Uh, yeah, I, I like video games and I like collect consoles. So here I have my Wii, an NES, an Xbox One, and an Xbox 360S. These are just a few. Awesome. That's uh, quite the collection. I have some old, I haven't really been playing video games a lot lately, so I don't have a lot of the newer stations. But I have a lot of old ones at home. I have a Sega, I've got a Super Nintendo, a lot of old stuff. A lot of people want the older stuff right now. Yeah. Like so SNES games are really expensive right now. I'm not sure why. Yeah, so I'm trying to, you know, hold on to it. Maybe yeah, give it to some of my younger family members one day or, you know, find somebody who can appreciate it. I think that's an awesome hobby. Do you have a favorite uh, console or a favorite video game or something like that? I know you have so many to pick from. Let's see. I think definitely the Wii is my favorite console because, like, I really – this is, like, the first video game, like, I ever played, like, on the Wii, Wii Sports. That's awesome, awesome. Definitely favorite just for the nostalgia factor. For sure. That's definitely a good pick. A lot of people that didn't play video games actually started with the Wii because it was so different with the motion controls and everything. A lot and of also, the, the NES I have from, like, 85, this was my mom's. Nice, 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 nice. Well, really? definitely keep that safe. Don't let really it get dusty. Keep it, keep it uh, nice and uh, together. Thank you for showing that to me, sir. Good to know. Let's go over to Tom and see what Tom's got. One sec, Tom, and I'll meet you real quick. Okay, Mr. Tom, what's up? Um, I right hear I got me from the I draw myself. Oh, whoa, Ooh, that's a pretty good drawing. That's that really good. good. How long did that take you? It took me like um like like twenty minutes. That's not know. long at all. That's that's pretty <laughs> fast. This is like the first um picture, my first good picture that I ever made in my life. That's and awesome. Only is my experience. That, that, I mean, that's really good. I am absolutely the worst at drawing and coloring and you know art and painting, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm really glad you you like that. Do you draw regularly? Does that mean you do a lot? What's up? Do you, do you draw a lot? Do you spend a lot of time doing that? Not that many times, not like, not like a lot, but sometimes. Okay, cool. But now cool. I feel like it. I like it. Awesome. I, I think a lot of people find it super relaxing and stuff. So I know lately everybody's been cooped up at home, drawing something that doesn't take that much stuff. So hopefully you can spend a lot of this time drawing and just getting better and better. I'd love to see some more of your drawings uh, as time goes on. Uh, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. We'll go over here to uh, Caitlin now. Caitlin, who do you have there? My dog. Your dog? What's your dog's name? Pete. Pete? Oh, awesome. And what type of dog is Mr. Pete? American Stafford. Okay. And does he know any tricks or anything like that? A few. A few? <laughs> cool. And how long have you had Pete for? I don't know. I don't know. A long time or a short time? Short time, I think. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Does Pete spend a lot of time outside or do you keep him in the house normally? Both. Both. Gotcha. Are there, are there any house rules? Anything Pete's not allowed to do at home? Um, don't pee in the house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I definitely don't think that that would be okay in the house. Oh, man. Okay. Well, thanks, Kayla. Thanks for showing Pete. Thanks, everybody, for everything they're showing, you know. There's something to be said about that. 
a lot of people, especially as they get older, they don't want to share. They're afraid that like if they share something about themselves, people are going to judge them harshly or they're not going to like what they like. And as a martial artist, it's very important that we're honest with ourselves. So if there is something that we like, whether it's the, our dog and our pets or our video games or a sport or art, uh, we should be you know, very honest with ourselves about that. And uh, definitely don't shy away from it just because you think somebody else might not like it. So thank you guys for taking the time to show me something that you guys like. I super appreciate it. Maybe next week I'll have the coaches here and the coaches will kind of show you something that they do other than martial arts. And maybe that'd be a cool thing to do. Um, as always, thanks guys for awesome class. Yesterday we drew a drawing for our uh, home training kit. One of our younger students, uh, Lyris one. But I'm gonna be doing another drawing tomorrow. So no, we don't have class tomorrow. I'll be doing a draw on Facebook Live for another home training kit, a pair of gloves and a pair of pads. So you won't have to be using your pillows and that kind of stuff if you win. Um, the last thing to do today is our student of the day. So everybody drum roll, please. Okay, I'm gonna give my student of the day today. Student did very, very well. I'm gonna give my student of the day today to William. He knew this William. move of the day. He explained it very well. He remembered it. He shared one of his passions. Nice. Uh, very consistent. Mm -hmm. he's, I think he's logged on to like every virtual class we've had. So I can tell he really cares. Good job with him. Keep up the great work. Everyone keep up the great work. And we're going to go and bow out today. So everybody pop up. Yes, sir. Good work. I'll see you guys next week. Same time, same place, same room code, all that good stuff. Make sure we're the oldest group. So we need to be helping out at home and all the rest. Good job there, everybody. And attention. Yes, sir. Bow. Oh, Okay, everybody. I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Hope you guys have an awesome weekend. Stay safe. Bye.